Okay, so recording is on, so let's see. So what SC Linux is, it's a security enhanced Linux. Security enhanced Linux, that's what it stands for. Okay, so what it is is, we have this regular process all the time, right? Like port uh, 22, we connect using port 22. And if you as an administrator change something, right? Oh, okay, I don't want to connect as port 22. Let's change this as port 222. Okay? But what happens here is the security around the Linux kernel and uh, Linux as a whole, there is another layer. It's like a guardian uh, angel watching it. So that checks it and it says not, not so fast. Even though you enabled uh, port 22, you're not gonna be able to connect here because this is not normal. Okay, so SC Linux will block it. So what we're gonna do today is uh, we're gonna change uh, port 222 to 2222 and see if you are able to establish the connection okay and then we're gonna we're gonna do some changes in the SC Linux that will allow us uh, the connection here okay so <clears throat> read through this process here unusual activity is blocked what exactly SC Linux does it protects the system from unusual activity okay And so, so the logic here is if a person has access to a building going through the front door, that doesn't mean he could go through the side door or, or uh, from the uh, shipping dock or whatever. So even he have access to the door, but the access is denied because he is trying to enter the building the way he's not supposed to. Okay, so that's what it is. And then, uh, okay, so so all these things matter here in SC Linux, uh, the file permissions and all that. And then, so there are three things you need to remember in SC Linux. One is a subject, a user or a process, object, a resource such as file, directory, device, or port, and access is a access how that access is performed for that file okay so let's move forward here and uh, what else we have here is uh, security policy and uh, security content context okay so some of this <coughs> I have to show you before you really understand. So security policy. So it's a system wide policy of rules defining which subject can access which object so subject here is if a user is trying to access a directory if he doesn't have per he doesn't have permission to then it will be blocked okay and then there are two policies in enterprise Linux so one is a targeted and strict and targeted is default okay and then the last one is security context So what is this? This is like a tag used by 
SC Linux to store uh, security attributes. of a subject and object. Okay, so now So the IP is uh oh Okay, so one thirty two, right? So how do you know if the SC Linux is working? What you do is get enforce. And if it says enforcing, that means the SC Linux is working. That's it. All right. Enforcing mode. Okay, in this mode, security policy is enforced, and that means it's uh, that means SC Linux security is active. Okay, enforcing means simple as that, right? And now, if you want to disable this, you do set enforce space zero and hit enter. You never do this here. This is very, very bad. If you go into a work and then you find out uh, SE Linux is set to zero and it says permissive. Don't make sure you make some noise, okay? Because this is a, a big security hole. Okay, and uh, Hold 
Oh, look at this NSA. Hmm. Is this by NSA? Let's let's put it in Google and see if it's by NSA. Uh oh yeah see this this was come up by NSA NSA has helped in creating this so you can imagine is this is very very secure here and it's uh, it's available for anybody and it's by Red Hat so even though SC Linux was developed by Red Hat and uh, keeping up with the free software architecture they have to make it public and it becomes a part of a, a Linux in general okay did you guys get it I didn't know it was developed by NSA though or NSA helped here <clears throat> Okay, whatever it is. So here, <clears throat> so the security policy is actually observed and warning will be uh, will be displayed. But policy is not policy is not enforced okay so you should never leave the policy enforcing okay and uh, if the system reboots the enforcing will be uh, in effect uh, enforcing will will be back uh, the system rubrics and ensor film will be turned on okay so there is another command let's take a look at it so you type se status and you hit enter here okay so here it says current mode is permissive okay and mode in the configuration file it's enforcing so if you look at this configuration file which directory the configuration file normally is etc folder is a configuration file folder okay Uh oh, this is blank. Why is it blank?
Linux um, Actually, this is a directory. So if I do ls here, so there is a, a config file here, right? And let me go to etc sysconfig. And there is a SC Linux file here too. Okay, so this is set to enforcing here. Okay, so what happens is when the system reboots, it will read this file and turn the SC Linux on. Okay, so let me quit. get enforce so it's permissive right if i restart the system will come back to sc linux enforcing So if you do get enforce, it says enforcing here, okay? So what we do is uh, VIETC sysconfig SC Linux. And if I said SC Linux to disable Okay, and then I'm going to restart the system. So if I do get enforce, okay, it's enforcing, right? If I restart it, let's see what happens. I'm just showing you how you could disable it here, okay? But don't ever do that in uh, the real world environment.
So now when you do this get and force is disabled here. Okay, so never ever do this. Okay, so just leave this on here, okay? So that way. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I never seen uh, I never seen a system that had uh, SC Linux turned off okay and uh, before it goes into production everybody checks the SC Linux is turned on or not okay <clears throat> So let's do this here. What I'm going to do is let's change the SSH port um, to use port number 2222. Yeah, I mean, you could choose any other port here. Can you guys pick up a port higher than 2000? Pick up what higher than 2000. Nobody? Anybody want to pick up port? Alright, let's keep it with the 2222 here. So if you launch Putty, we are connecting using port 22, right? So we're going to try connecting to port 2222. So how I am going to do that? Let's see. Let me log back in there. How many ports we have in the system anyway? Either if it's Linux or Windows. Anybody? Number of ports in OS how many? 2 to the power of 16 is what? how much is that? so I'm gonna say um, calc is it at 65,000? So how many, so I'm sorry, somebody say something? Yes, isn't it 65,000? Yeah, it's about 65,000. So, so if you do two to the power of 16, right? 2 to the 2 to the power multiplied by 16 times 
So what is 2 to the power of 16 is like 2 times 2 times all the way to 16. Or if you're using a calculator, let me turn on the scientific. Okay, when you do 2 to the power of and you use the power of uh, x to the power of y. So now we're going to give the number 16. So 65,536. These many ports. These many ports are nothing but doors. Yeah, they are um, 65,536 ports. Okay, <coughs> so now if you notice, it took a little while for the system to come back up. Why is that? Because it was disabled, right? When it gets enabled and reboots, it takes its time to go, go, go through the security check on the system. So it takes a little while. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to change the port, normal SSH port. What is that? That is port 22. Okay. Change to, change SSH port to. Two, two, two. <clears throat> so how do we do how do we find out you type ssh underscore port underscore t as in tommy target uh, so there is a sc manage command se Okay, so type se manage, right? What? Se manage. S e m a n a g e. Uh oh, it's not listed. Okay, I thought this this comes down with the give me one second. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, um, stall half and manage. Uh oh.
Okay, something like this happen. You put in Google. Why is this not there? I thought it comes default with the system here, but then again, we are running a bare bone system. It says installed, and these are available. Okay, it should have come with the full version of SC Linux uh, when if we had, uh, let's see here. All right, let me just make a clone of this. So I'm going to get rid of this, uh, remove, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on.
so this one is a full version okay I mean not the full version but it, it has some updates on it the the operating system size is bigger because it has all the utilities and all that I'd be surprised if, if it doesn't have AC manage in here so this must be 120 right 250 okay What the? I didn't know what SC Manage has to be installed separately. This is surprising to me. So I'm installing the, there are some extra utilities that's coming down through and at the same time it's installing the Python. So, so don't worry about this, no package, utils available. Okay. It's okay, it's installed now. So let me clear this. Get enforce. It's enforcing, right? So what I'm gonna do is se manage port hyphen l, right? It gives the list of all the ports it's managing. So right now, how many ports are, is managing? How do I know how many lines are the output? What is the command I use? How do I find out how many lines is this? WC. Yeah, very good. WC hyphen L. Minus one. So two, 422 ports are. SE, SE manage is managing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab for 22. Okay. So in here, all, all of the, this is not, I mean, it's just grabbing for 22. But if you look at the port we have, this is the one we are looking for. Okay. So.
<sighs> All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the status of the port 22. It must be working, right? We are connecting. This is more towards the security level, okay? But still on a Linux side. If you ever want to go into a security, uh, the starting salary would be 150,000. You should definitely have Linux skills in there, okay? It is a very, very good, uh, high paying career path. After Linux, everybody should go into a security environment. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is grab SSH ETC services. This is the services file that enable all the services running in the background. For example, if we have All these ports and services are enabled in here, okay? So was this all default and uh, enabled or was this after you downloaded those utils? No, no, actually you're you're right. These are default. Okay. But that doesn't mean services actually running, okay? Okay. When we run system CTL restart or start the service name, it will uh, also hit this services file and go through all the things you need to do if we once we here's the thing if you're running a command and what you're seeing on the screen is like simple output right but there is a complex transaction happening in the background there's a lot of lot of things are happening in the background for example if you type a simple ls right Wow. I thought I got rid of this here one time, didn't I? Well, when you type ls here, actually what is happening here is it's running from this command here. You could definitely run this and it will give you the same output. See? So, so if, you are, if you are enabling something, it's... It's running other things in the background, whatever it's supposed to do. Yeah, go ahead. So wait, why were all the files um, showing up in red? Like, uh, remember, I cloned this. Uh, I cloned uh, back when I was showing you how to do the system wide update. Uh, we inst we downloaded all these files here one time, I think. When I was teaching you. Uh, how to install, how to download the files. It probably came down when I ran this command here, right? Yeah, I'm download only. Uh, yeah, local install. When I ran that command, it probably came down. 
see yum install download only and then I did uh, the Firefox so those are all the dependencies of the Firefox if I'm not mistaken the Firefox is about uh, 108 I mean not 186 uh, dependencies right yeah see when you do yum provides Firefox it will also give you the dependencies uh, uh uh let's do yum install okay seven uh one packet seven independent So when we installed Firefox back then, it had about, all these are dependencies. Okay. And look at the file size, file size is not too big. Okay, this is the biggest so far. And the dependencies are just files that, that the app needs in order to, to function, right? I, I could barely hear you. I said the dependencies are uh, part of the files that the yeah. app needs to, to function, right? Correct. If the if the if you're installing the Firefox, you're installing all these files. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's what it means. So are they in red because we don't have the? They're not installed into Firefox. Uh. We don't have Firefox running. Why are they in red? Let's go in here. I think I. Are they, are they zipped? I don't remember what red means. Are, are they zipped, Mr. Zipper? Like uh, gun zip? No, those are RPM, dot RPM. You see dot RPM? Uh huh. Those are the RPM files. Isn't it at the top, red? Where? Uh, keep going. Right there. Red. Yeah, red. Okay, so the package is installed, but it's not in repo. So we installed it manually. So the package is installed in the system here. So if I do which Firefox, yeah, it's installed. So we didn't get these dependent files from the repository? No, when I was showing you how to install manually, this is where I download it locally and then install it from the local. Okay. What does it look like when it's downloaded from the repository though? Uh, if it's downloaded from the repository, update is available in repo, so it will be bold bold and current it will be the kernel okay what, what type of file what type of files um like, or what type of applications are in the repository uh, uh, what kind of application in where what type of files are in the repository or what type of apps i'm sorry no uh, unlimited a lot of them so when you do like yum uh, provides something it goes into this file here uh, mm -hmm. you go to cd etc yum dot repos and ls if you cat this file here this is a base url it has the url way to go on to the internet and get the files here so so if you look at this mirror files it reads through those files 
and this is an online repository. It's going there and checking and downloading it from there, okay? <clears throat> so did we not use yum when we were installing it locally? We use a command to install locally, right? I mean, I showed you the command to install, uh, download physically locally and then run it locally. That's what the command was for. You could okay. run, you could install it directly online or you could uh, save it locally, then install it. That's what we did. We used the yum, right, for that? Yeah, so I attached the yum and attached, and attached the uh, command download only. Download only and then I provided the directory. And which directory it downloaded, whatever directory I was in. Okay. So if I do a uh, cd mkdir the Firefox download. But how did you get all the dependents uh, already downloaded first locally? You had to get it from the repository, correct? Yeah, the, uh, very good question. The uh, the the command does it for you. So if you're doing this, so if I do ls, there is nothing in here. When I run this command, it will do it for you. So it's downloading all these files locally. It says background downloading package existing and uh, Okay, so if you do ls, ls have an l. Okay. So what might have happened here is, so what it might have is all the 86 files, they might have bundled, bundled it up by, since then. Do you see the file date? This file date is February 1st. So they might have bundled it up so that they could reduce the dependencies. Okay. Here's the thing here. The operating system doesn't matter. It's Windows or Linux or any other software. It is a work in progress, okay? okay. So I'm just wondering, where did, where did it get the dependency files it's using now on the local locally? Where did it originally get? It? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it must have, uh, when you go into this folder, so you have this file here, right? Yes. It went into this location. It went to this location. Okay, so it got it from the internet. It went and got it, it, it did. It did get it from internet. Yes. Okay. So then, what's the difference if it's still using the internet to go get it in both ways? So once you download it, uh, if you if you don't have uh, internet in a secure environment, you just move it there. There will be some servers that are that will not be on internet. Okay. Okay. At least not the public internet. Uh, it will be on the intranet. You copy it and then you move it to the server. You want to install it in a secure environment. And then, okay. then you will do, uh, execute this command. So it's like, is it like a, like, um, network passwords and local passwords on your computer? Well, what you could do is you could like uh, isolate some servers, some servers in uh, one environment and other servers in other environment. Mm -hmm. It is possible that you could set up a network, a small network within a company that doesn't have an internet access. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. But, uh, but initially, you have to get the the, the file off the internet. Yeah. Okay. And th these are the trusted source, okay? These are okay. the trusted sources. 
So this is a centers.org or a university or wherever it's getting from. Mm -hmm. So didn't you say that when you use yum install and you're getting it from the repository, it's using the same link, is it not? It gets the it from one of these around. links here, right? It's probably getting from here. Okay. And it downloads and saves it. And then when you move it to the secure environment, then you use the... You know, then you... Yeah, when, if you use yum, by default, yum goes online, right? But here, what we did, we did uh, uh, so we did, we did a command. If you do install, it goes online. If you do the command local install, then it, it's searching locally. And you have to provide the directory name. Since you didn't provide the directory name, you're probably running it wherever it is, the files are sitting from. Okay. But you said it even either way, when you just use yum install and then yum local install when it was using it, you said it would use the same link either way, right? To go on the internet? No, local install is going to do it local. Okay. No, but what I was saying, like, when to get it on your local system first, you had to go through your URL, the URL, go on the internet, and download it from the repository. Either that or... Uh, you could order a CD too. Okay. Most of the time, the financial institutions are very hypersensitive to the security, right? Yeah. So what they do is, they will rather order the CD. Okay. Manually. There are some stuff you have to do it manually, manually for security reasons. You know what I mean? Yeah. Earlier, right now, we were just talking to Austin about it. Um, so you said when they have two different uh, servers running or on the same network, one server will have access to the internet, and that way they can download it from the repo locally, and then uh, from the other server access it through the network? Yeah. Okay. So, so since this is not a network class, you know, and... Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know too much about how network works. Okay. Um, it's a really good thing to learn, but uh, working networking jobs, they are very small. I mean, networking jobs, if you want to do work from home, more than likely you probably won't be able to do work from home, okay? Not all the time. But, uh, Yeah, but there is a lot of things on network also. It pays the same. If you're a network engineer or a system engineer, it's the same exact pay. If you are a network engineer and a system engineer, nobody is going to pay you the double salary, okay? <laughs> Unless you have two different jobs. They'll just pay you one salary, doesn't matter. But you're just bringing it up as it's a good, like, background to have, understanding of. Yeah. If you want to go into business, you know, then you have to know all that. Like me, if I'm doing, uh, setting up some servers sometimes for a customer, I do some uh, setup for on the site too, but when it comes to a network level, if it's like a big uh, enterprise, if it's a network level, in fact, uh, there are two different jobs here. If you are a network engineer, you will never be able, uh, the big companies never allow you to work on the system. And if you are a system, they won't allow you to work on network anyway. There is a separation of duties, okay? One person would end up having too much power anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a no-brainer. If, if one person quits or died or whatever, then the company uh, is going to be dead in water, so they don't want to allow that. Okay, so let me get rid of these files from here. Okay, so check the status of the port. 
So I'm going to do grab SSH ETC services. Okay, so So this is the port we are interested in. Okay. Now, let's fool around here. I'm going to go into uh, VI ETC SSH SSHD underscore config. Okay, this is the file which is conf uh, which is controlling the SSH uh, SSH connection so what I'm gonna do is Give me one second. Hey there, I'm reaching out because I know you're a business opportunity by the person. So I want to share with your program. Okay. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open into firewall, okay? Firewall CMD. Permanent. Zone. Equal public. And I'm going to add the port. Okay. Equals two 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 TCP. It's a TCP port. And now what I'm going to do is firewall cmd uh, reload and 
and I'm gonna say list port okay why is uh, why is the port 22 and other generally generally used port is not showing up here because they are already open by default those ports are already open and it's not going to show up in the firewall okay Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here 192.168.1.1 I'm trying to connect to port 222. It says the connection is refused. Even though we put a hole into the firewall. Okay, why is it happening? Because... Uh, so I'm going to take a picture here. So what was the difference with this and last week when we were trying to open the hole and make it connect? It was last week, it wasn't connecting, right? When we were trying to connect to the port? Yeah, last week it's a configuration issue. Last week I was even trying to uh, make a hole for the SC Linux. So is that the issue that wasn't happening? It's just the firewall wouldn't allow? Yeah, the firewall and SC Linux. Right now, our situation is SC Linux. SC Linux is not allowing that, okay? So in here, there is also, I ran a SC Linux configuration because I want to show, I didn't show you this yesterday. So th there are a few more things that are in here, which is, uh, which is not working. If I remove the security part, it should work. Yeah, but I, I want to I want to show you everything with the security and all that. So if you if you're saying if you took off the SC Linux security, yeah, it it might work. But we we don't want to do that yet. Just hang on to this. Okay. So. <coughs> so we have this port Okay, so the connection is refused here. Why is the connection refused? Because, also before that, let me restart the service here, okay? Restart the service. How do you do that, system? Uh, CTL, restart, status. system 
Okay, so this is the first time ever you're checking the status of SSHD because it comes with the system, it's running and active in the background, okay? If I restart it, it should give me the error. Okay, why it failed? So let me clear this. Let me copy this before I clear it. So if I run this status again, what will happen is uh, fail to start open SSH server daemon. Okay, so let's see here. Let me clear this again. Let me bring it up. So it says here process ID, blah, 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 and code exited status 255. And here's the error, fail to start open SSS daemon, okay? Is that supposed to happen or are we supposed to be able it's to? Supposed to happen. Happen. It's supposed to happen. It's supposed to. So, you could put in the Google and see what is the problem. It will give you several, uh, several, um, um information online okay yeah i'm not worried about it because i already know it's a SE linux problem so what I'm going to do is uh, go back here and uh, where is the SC manage port? So I'm going to check the status here. Okay, so Let me do SC manage. I'm going to grab for um, port 22, right? What was the command? Grab twenty two. So look at this here. It says SSH port, and this is still twenty two. We're gonna have to change this. Can we do that manually? Uh, I'm sorry. Can we do that manually? Hello. Yeah, Mr. the far. Yeah, I could hear you, but you, you sound far away. Can we do it manually? Yeah, we have to do it manually, actually. Yep. So now I'm going to say connection is still denied, even though the ports are uh, is open through firewall also regular port 22 will not work either Okay, after we do uh, the SC manage update, 
uh, it will not work. This is all because of uh, security, right? SC Linux? I cannot hear you. This is all because of the SC Linux, right? Yes. Security. Yeah. Okay. Right now, SC Linux is allowing it. It is allowing it? Uh, only 22. Okay. If I open another connection here, I should still be able to connect with 22. 192.168.56.250. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. I uh, once this connection is the reason I'm still connected is uh, because I still have the connection. If I disconnect it, then it will be gone. Okay. So, why is it doing that now? Not even allowing port 22. To this is the existing connection here. This is the existing connection here. That's why it's allowing it. Will disconnect the moment I. Uh, update the SE Linux, okay? So let me do SE manage port. Let me do it uh, on a fresh screen. Port, okay? Hyphen A add hyphen T uh, SSH underscore port underscore this one here the dash stands for what yeah yeah give me one second yeah let me copy this So right now it's there and it's at 22, right? So the command to change it is this and T hyphen P port SSH no, TCP protocol 222. Okay, now we sh we got disconnected here. Yeah. It should time out now. Okay. Okay, we did not. So let's see if we are able to check the status. Okay, look at this. So port, oh, okay. So now, actually it's allowing port 22 and uh, 222. Is one inbound and outbound? Yeah. No, no, no. Both are inbound and both are outbound. Okay. Let's see if I could connect here. Uh, new session. 192.168.56.250. There you go. I'm able to connect now. And this is with the firewall? Oh. We allowed it through the firewall. Now, we allowed this through SC Linux. Okay. Okay, we allowed this through SC Linux, so it's, we are able to connect now. Didn't you just try to a little earlier just to go through port 22 itself too and it also denied you? No, it was not uh, regular 22, it was 222. Okay. Okay, so the login is successful.
<coughs> so I did that and uh, yeah, it this comes up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do system CTL. restart sshd okay it did not give us an error message because it went through just fine let's do status okay so so look at this it says port 2222 222 If you want, go ahead and play around and uh, put it to like port 65,000 or something when you're practicing and tell me what happens. We'll get the fail to open SSH, right? Uh, say that again? We'll get that error message failed to open SSH, right? No, I still, I heard something, but you're muffled. We'll get the fail to open SSH, right? Uh, you will get one or you don't get one? No, we do get failed. Failed to open SSH. Are you getting it right now? No, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. If you're trying to connect to uh, port 222? No, it's like 6,000 or something. Yeah, right now, yeah. You have to follow all this process if you want to do it. Yeah. You said both the ports are both inbound and outbound? Yeah, so this port is both inbound and outbound. It's a TCP connection, right? Sync, sync, attack. Sorry, what did you say? Think like what? Sync, TCP connection. Sync, Yeah. S Y N A C K S Y N A C. Okay, yeah, I got it. I heard it now. Where did he go? See TCP connection? I think I put that part in network here. So if you go into network. Down. Uh, underneath permissions. Yeah. TCP connection. Sync, sync, act, act. This is what is happening right now. And when the connection is terminate, fin, fin, act, act. Don't worry about all this too much here. Okay. You're gonna get user administration permissions, LVM. Make sure you know how to use it in the middle of a night. If I wake you up in the middle of a night and set up like five LVMs, you should <laughs> have no problem doing that. Practice LVM every day, administration and permissions. Other okay. stuff you you could look up all the time, but in the interview you're gonna get butchered for LVM because knowing LVM will tell the user 
you know what is this you're putting in the absolute path so that covers your absolute path here okay and then when you do the lv create a vg create you know you know how to use this vg as you know how to use this mkdir and then you're mounting it to the drive using absolute path you know that so all these a lot of things the lvm questions covers them so that uh, the you the interviewer knows you you already know some stuff in here thank you will ansible also be a big part in an in interview question or no you just have to say uh, you know ansible and scripting okay even if he tries to uh, pull fast on you, then you could go in here and say, uh, most of the time, Ansible, you just have to set up a passwordless SSH, and after that is all the regular commands here. These are all the ad hoc commands, right? These are all the commands. These are all the regular commands we have in here. LS, update, BLK, DF-H. Okay, so let's put everything back the way it was. Let me see if I'm still able to connect using 22. to connect using 22 why I am not able to connect let's start hyphen P grab I right, am not worried about this too much so let's put it back together the original way it was okay so let me say um, why wasn't the net set not work yeah the, that thing is not installed here you could install it okay I think it's net utils. What does um, the using provides after the um, install do? Uh, yeah, what else you could do is yum, uh, uh, yum provides net and an asterisk. Let's see what it comes up with.
Is it just showing you the packages or the files that are in the net utils? No, the anything that is starting with net. Oh. So will it show you from what has been downloaded already or from what you can No, still it's going online and grabbing it from online. Okay. Oh, net tools. It's a part of a package of net tools. Now we should have a net stat. Yeah, so what net stat shows you is network stat open ports hyphen p and grab for uh, 22. Um, or grip for SSH. So you said um, 22 is one of the default uh, permissions that are always accessible through the firewall, right? Yeah. But after we enable 222 to go through both um, firewall as well as the CQSC Linux, why is it um, now blocking 22? Uh, it was still on the list when we did the, uh, the other... Uh, command that we ran. Yeah, earlier. let's see if he is showing in uh, SC Linux. SS port. Uh, port is there. Okay, so it's list all. So is 222 just not visible with other ports, or is it just gone now? Right now it is. No, not the 42, just the port 22? 22? Yes. Uh, 
So this is public active here. Uh, uh, hold, hold on. Okay, so let's see what happened in SSH, SSH service. Four Which port are we looking for now?
Why is the TCP here listed in red? What? Why is the TCP above the saw? Yeah, I'm just checking red? if it's uh, using any other port. TCP. Okay, so let me exit here. I think it allows either or, so let's see here. Um, so what I did was It is also checking the SSHD config file, right? Uh, So if I do, uh, can you put comma two 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 or another port? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I have to restart the system. And that's the directory the SC Linux is checking, right? Uh, yeah, the SC Linux checks that too. Status. Failed. Um. Okay, we didn't get the error. Mm, now you see this? And 22. So let's retry it. There you go. Did you get it? Mm-hmm. Now, new session, 22, 192.168.256.250, uh, 250, right? I'm able to get in there. Port 22. And 
Okay, so port 22, and let's try the other port. What was the previous uh, directory we put in um, port 22? Uh, I'll, I'll show you. So 192.168.56.250 uh, and uh, 2222. There you go. So the file uh, we need to do is SSH and SSH uh, deconfig. We're going to come back to this config file here when we're going to. Uh, Deny the service for root. Okay. What was the uh, file or directory we used prior to this one? We were looking at. Uh, directory for what? The previous one we were looking at when we were adding in the two 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 port. This is it. This is the file. Let's go this into the this. It's a configuration one. file. This is a SSHD uh, configuration file. Which one are you talking about? SC manage port? Yes. This is, uh, you're grabbing it, SC manage. And SC, SC manage is, um, is it allowing uh, hyphen L actually. So SE manage, if you don't grab for it, it's coming up with just for ports, just for ports, it is managing 4 and 32. But if you do SE manage only, uh, SE manage is a security, <coughs> security, um, uh, protection layer which is uh, going to match more than just the port is going to manage a lot of other things uh, let's see here uh, so earlier when we added the port 2222 that's um, when it finally came up when we ran SC manage yeah when we the, SC manage see manage is allowing two ports so this is the original port and this is the port we allowed it manually right yeah. So, but when we went in the configuration file, even when right now, when port 22 wasn't there, it still uh, showed up port 22. Yeah, we added port 22 early on. We added port 22 early on. In here. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I didn't yeah. capture that, so. But even in that file right now, we just added port 22. Yeah, by default, by default, it does. Okay. It is, uh, by default, it, it is like this. It is like this. It will still read it here. Let's see if it's going to do. It'll probably read 2222 over the default, right? Yeah. Yep. See, even if we commit it out, it's working here. But let's see the status here. Oh, okay, no. It won't allow it now. Yeah. But if you go back in there and comment out. See, but you see how you don't have it um, allowed now through this, through the config file? But yeah. even when you se manage it still lists the port why yes. is that so when you're doing something here it's doing a lot of things in the background right yes yeah it's like a gearbox you know one gear is pushing the other one is doing and all that and that's how the it works okay can you run um system ctl restart and then uh, i just did the manage, and then run and then, se and match and then uh, I think it's going to only work now on port 22. See, it's back to port 22. Even though it, in the config file it's committed out.
So it's like once you add another um, port there. Then it, it overrides it this. Then you have okay. to manually add both ports. Okay. Can you, uh, without changing this, could you run um, SC manage list ports and then do 22? For grab 22. So we didn't run SC manage, so it's going to be there. That's what my feeling is. Yeah, it's still there. It's still there? So how do we get the, uh, take that off of there? Uh, you have to do SC manage delete, so clear. SC manage uh, hyphen D, and it will it will remove it from there. So look at that. Uh, so we are adding a port here, right? Instead of A, you're gonna do D. D means delete the port. Okay. Yeah, it's gone now. Okay. I think you guys have good understanding what SC Linux is doing now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so the next topic uh, is uh, NFS. I think NFS is done already, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the NFS is there. So before that, let me put everything in the document. So what we learned here is a uh, note port 22 is uh, disabled only port 222 will work okay to make uh, port 222 work again um, add to etc ssh ssh d underscore config file okay so I'm going to say port equals 2222 and port equals 222 Okay, this will make it work. Okay. But when you added um, the port 222, that just overwrit the 22 to make 2222 the new SSH port? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So even though we did that, we still have need to make a hole into the SC Linux, okay? Sure. If we would have opened the port here, if the SC Linux is not there, so we have to make a hole into the firewall. We have to make, uh, config the SSHD config and SC manage. Three places we have to do it. If you do two places, if the third place is not there, then it overrides it. So where will it override it? If the third place is not listed or? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what? Which part will it override? The the location where it's not written, or it will just override it, meaning it won't allow you to run the new port you're trying to open up. If if it's not allowed in SC Linux, then it will uh, deny. Okay. In in IT in general, if you have 
allow in 10 place and one place is denied then it will deny everything okay you have to have an explicit allow for everybody and uh, one implicit deny will override all the explicit uh, allow did you get it yes all right so you remove this and then you remove uh, so the port 22 is removed Okay, now uh, what I'm going to do is after that we went into uh, VIETC SSH uh, SSH uh, D.config, right? We went in there and uh, we even do this here. Put this line back to original. Then let me clear this, then uh, system CTL restart SSHD. Okay, so no errors. Now, what we're going to do is check the status. Okay, so we are end of this. Just a quick question, Mr. Yeah. Did you say they didn't have the line where you added the port 22 to the SC manage, or you did have that in the notes? Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Oh, you no, want no, no, to I'm add it here? You, yeah, where you had it add, where you had add port 22. In the SC manage? It was already there. What is your question? In the Word document, I'm saying, did you add that line where you added um, port yeah. 22 to the SC manage? Yeah, right here. Okay. Uh, allow through. So now it's uh, doing this here, right?
so what I'm gonna do is let's uh, get out of this so I'm gonna set up a pixie server okay let's uh, I'll tell you what pixie server is I'm gonna clone let's clone this one here and I'm gonna say pixie pxe server So let's go and find out what Pixie server is, okay? So I'm gonna say a Pixie server. So what is a pixie server? It is a server you could set it up so that you could do the multiple installation on the system here, right? We are doing cloning here. Now what if you want to do like launch uh, five or six servers simultaneously from uh, instead of doing instead of installing it from the CD, you want to do it like five servers simultaneously from the network, okay? This is where it comes from. So... So... pronounce pixie okay pxe is uh, one of the components of the server installation which allows a server to boot from a pixie server okay on a network prior to booting from OS on the local hard drive this is used for mass installation of the servers without the need for a DVD or a USB okay well if you want to install something you need like a CD or DVD right but we're gonna set up a pixie server as such, we don't need that.
So we have, I'm going to set up a Pixie and DHCP server. I'm going to explain what all these here in a minute. And uh, the IP should be like 32. Okay, so this is what a Pixie server looks. It's a server sitting on the network here, right? And what we'll do is we'll configure it so that it is uh, it is setting up, giving out the IP address, and then we could use the server to start installing uh, start installing the uh, images here. So I'll show you all, all that here. Okay, so let me connect 192.168.56.250 Oh, 133, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to configure the Pixie server here. So we have IP, we have host name, so I'm going to say VIETC host name. I'm going to say uh, PXE uh, Pixie01 dot ZMPT dot com, okay? So this Pixie server stands for a uh, network network boot installation. So server IP is. 192.168.56.133 and uh, host name equals um, pixie01.zmpt.com okay now 
what we're going to do is we're going to set the static IP address etc sysconfig network if network scripts okay and uh, since this is bond vi ifcfg bond zero what i'm going to do here is uh, i'm going to make it static One thirty-three. Right, it should stick when I reboot the system. I configured it, I'm rebooting the system here, okay? Alright, it should be back up now. I'm gonna root red hat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the um, required packages, okay? So there are a bunch that needs yum install hyphen y tftp. This is the requirements. How do I know all that? Because uh, it comes from the white pages. TFTP then TF TFTP hyphen server okay and uh, system Linux VSFTPD XINET uh, hyphen Y is already there so right so remember we installed VSFPTPD, it's not working, uh, but this one is not secure, so we won't have problem here. So where, uh, where do we look for these, which white pages? I'm sorry, what? So where do we look for this um, line of code that you said you found out from white pages? Yeah, white pages. White so, pages means there is a publication, whoever comes up with the technology I think I've told you, they have to write the documentation, right? Yes. Yeah, those people, they release the white pages and it comes with the... So if you go into Red Hat website, they would have all this. Okay, uh, so you just looked for yeah. the documentation or the white pages for the PXC server? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, And so for what we did last week, um, will we just look up for the SE Linux or? For VSFPD, uh, for the. Yes, FPD. Yeah, that one is uh, actually has a uh, bug part going there. on, yeah. Okay. But that was also through Red Hat here, right? Yeah. Um, set up a Pixie server.
how does a pixie server work so it says subscription required so let me s give, give me one minute here server will start assigning the IP addresses okay this will make sense when it's actually working option domain name server okay so this is the DNS server we had 192. What do we have our DNS servers? One twelve and one fourteen. Okay, so DNS server will be one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot fifty six dot or was it 113, right? Or 112? 112 and 114. Yeah, okay. 112. Semicolon. Okay, option. Uh, domain name. What is the domain name? Pixie zero one dot zmpt dot com. This is where it's coming from. Okay, the domain name pixie zero one dot zmpt dot com. This is what I agreed to put in there and a semicolon. Option routers. Um, we'll just give the domain name address 192.168.56.112 option broadcast address 192.168.56.112 one sixty eight dot fifty six dot okay so what will happen here is this is the broadcast address when you do IP config this is the information you will get it 255 okay semicolon now you have to type a default lease name default lease time is 600 maximum lease times 7200 now what I'm going to do is uh, um IP of the server so this IP of, huh so what is the 7200 and 600 for? those are minutes 600 minutes and 7200 minutes Well, you know what I'm going to do is, yeah, this over here, it is supposed to be the Pixie server, 133. Domain name, uh, not the server. DN, it's not the domain name server. It's just the domain name server IP address. So is the router. So this server we are setting up is going to act like a router. And the IP address would be the next server. 
It's going to be the same IP address, 192.168.56.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
Yeah, right here. TFTP and TFTP server. So what it's doing is when it's going through all the system here, it's going through all these files, and then uh, that's what is happening. Some of the things are a little complex here. Uh, you just have to deal with it, you know what I mean? You may not understand some stuff because you just have to be in IT for a little while before you really understand some of the stuff. I'm not saying, I mean, it's hard for you to, but uh, I, you know what I mean? We are to a point um, that uh, this is how some stuff works. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go copy some uh, TFTP files. Okay, example files into the TFTP boot folder, okay? So what I'm going to do is cd hyphen v user share Sys Linux uh, Pixie Pixie Linux dot zero file, okay? And then we're gonna copy it to var lib tftp. If you go into this TFTP folder here, and if you do ls, there is nothing in here, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call, start copying some files. From this, from this, uh, this is uh, one of the example files here, we're gonna copy that. So we copied it there. And then another file we need is a menu. C32. Okay, and another file we need to copy is memdisk memdisk and then I'm going to copy to here Okay, and uh, another file is memboot Linux uh, uh, mboot mboot.c32. Okay, and uh, another file which is needed is chain.c32. All right, before I forget, let me copy all these files here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, once this is copy, 
um, if you do ls hyphen l here, so all these files are really important files. We need this. This is the most important file. So now what I'm going to do is I need to make a folder. Make a directory in TFTP boot folder, OK? So here. EWD MK DIR and the folder name is a little um, weird PXE Linux LINUX dot CFG MK DIR Network Boot It's a folder we are making Okay, if you do ls and l you see these two folders we just created. Okay, now what we're gonna do is uh, copy the CD, copy the ISO file to the uh, server. Okay, mm. now you're gonna learn how to use WinSCP. Okay, oh man. So you should have something called when you first downloaded WinSCP, right? When you first downloaded from the... Um, so WinSCP, I'm going to launch it. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot fifty six dot one thirty three. Username is root and the password red hat. Okay, let me capture the screen. Okay, <clears throat> so you connect, yes, and now I have to locate where the file is at. Where is the ISO file I have? Yes. 
you see this file here so where are you going to copy this to um, copy to our root folder okay so if you do dff and h make sure we have enough uh, size here I have like about uh, 14 GB so 12 GB is available 13 percent is used so if I copy it in here uh, 2 GB uh, SDB one I'm not worried about that so I'm gonna go here to my uh, document and downloads okay so this file here why do I have this to here? I'm gonna get rid of this okay this file I'm going to copy it here to the root directory In about five minutes it should be done copying or less copy it there This is good enough, right? You don't need too much explanation about this. It's simple. When you launch it, host name, put in the IP address, root, uh, C port 22, still using port 22. So dot ISO is the operating system file you downloaded, okay? When you first started this class.
so it's almost done so you could do ls in fact it's busy actually you guys are still there Yes. Okay. Okay, it finished copying the sentence to yeah. the root file. So now if you do uh, ls hyphen l, you see this is a, a big fat file uh, that got copied. About 4.4 .4 gigs, so that looks about right. Okay, so I don't need to do that here, just... Okay, now we're gonna make it usable. So we're gonna have to pick a folder. You know how we normally download, you know how we normally mount the file? So we're gonna mount the CD. We're gonna use our good old mount command, hyphen O, loop, and the name of the file, CentOS. Let me uh, do ls hyphen L first. See this file? This is the file we're gonna mount. Mount hyphen O. This goes only for the CD if you are mounting the CD. And then where are you gonna mount? I'm gonna mount it to the MNT folder. Okay, yeah, it's gonna get this uh, output that is normal. What did you say you only use when you're mounting the CD? Yeah, the hyphen O. Loop. I now what I'm going to do is uh, df heaven hatch. Now you see MNT is mounted here. See? Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to copy this to the MNT folder. Copy. Copy to var tftp public directory. So I'm going to clear this. I might as well keep you this here. So what you're going to do is go into CD folder, MNT, okay, LS. We are you're going to have to copy everything to uh, slash var slash ftp slash public folder 
So CP copy hyphen AV asterisk and where are we copying to var FTP public. So for the, the slash AV, so it copied all the files, correct? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter. It's copying the images and everything from there. See, all these RPMs are there. It's, it's on the CD also. I hope we have enough space there. Let me go. You know what, let's stop it here. I didn't even realize we went like 40 minutes over. So why did we need to reinstall the OS for the FTP? Oh, you, you have to just read and see what's, what I, what's gonna happen. What, what we're doing is, we are copying all the files onto the server here. And this will become a server and then later on you will install multiple computers from one server. So if you look at the diagram, you have you have two clients here, right? Yes. You could have a lot of them. Right now it's only two clients. You could have like many in here, many clients here. So you could have like many. But the client on the left, it has an arrow pointing going towards the PXE server. Yeah, I'll fix that. Oh, okay.
So all of them, they all are, this is, this is uh, the mama and all these are babies and it's getting all this information from there. Okay. You could have hundreds, not hundreds, yeah, hundreds, why not? If you have like a good infrastructure, you may have like hundreds going simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is working good. Okay, so you have uh, all this is going to here. Okay, it's going here. It's going here. Okay, it's going. Uh, so it's going here. It's going here. It's going here. Right. So this is similar to how we were trying to set up the DNS servers, correct? Uh, In a way? Yeah, you could relate it to DNS also, why not? But DNS is uh, managing the names. If you type an IP address, it will give you the uh, name. If you give, type the name, it will give you the IP address. Okay. And so you said this will create Yeah, this will uh, create actually the real working systems on the network. Okay, so this server will give IP address to all of them simultaneously and all of them okay. will start downloading the operating system from the server. Okay, so we're taking, so that's why we're re-downloading the operating system into a new directory. Yeah, that's why we are downloading it here into okay. this server from there, all of them are going to go down in there. So all the, the clients and computers that are connected to the Pixie server will enter or download everything that's in that folder, mm -hmm, that directory. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you you getting it? So th this is a uh, a Pixie server. So this is a uh, Pixie DHCP TFTP all three things are in one here. All, all three of them can be uh, set up separately also. Okay. But when these computers are connected, shouldn't they already have the, the operating system installed already? No. If you're buying like a uh, if you're buying like a, a hardware that is coming uh, from Dell, uh, they do come with it. But most companies they wipe it off and they do the custom custom okay. uh, build and put it on online. And so just to quickly connect it to PXC, so they all just quickly download it. Yep. Instead of having to manually go through. Mm -hmm. okay. Because in the in the an enterprise environment, everything has to be uh, streamlined. Everything has to be same exact duplicate, so that you don't have to uh, you know uh, have a hassle of managing many many personality. Everything is identical, then you could manage it easily, right? Yes. This is like a complex, advanced uh, engineering part here. 
okay if you end up doing this you you, you are already well ahead of a lot of i mean you would be doing this uh, like eight nine ten years into your career so but uh, mm -hmm. you, you're learning this at this moment is going to be really really uh good for you so, so how often yeah. is it huh? that you would have how often is it in work would you have to set up this whole pxc pixie server i would say <laughs> See, if you're doing like thousands of servers, then you, ha you it just won't be one server. You have to have many servers. Then you have to do updates and all that. And then you're doing it from scratch if the new operating system comes out. So if you did it for six, then you have to do for Red Hat 7, then you have to do it for Red Hat 8. And if there are yeah. thousands of servers, then you have to do it like a couple hundred uh, Pixie servers, you know? Okay. Spread throughout the geographical area and all that. So do you have to keep updating them or just start, you have to create a new Pixie servers with every update to the right If it's the operating system is new, then you have to scratch. If you're moving from seven to eight, then you have yes. to do it from scratch. Okay. If you're just doing the updates, then uh, by the time uh, seven is done, eight is coming along, uh, the company decided now we have to move to eight. So you uh, have to start planning this and all that. And so you said you would have to have hundreds of Pixie servers, you said? Yeah, if it's, if, if there are 10,000 servers, you yeah. might, probably might need those, right? So how much can one Pixie server cover? How many is uh... Simultaneously, it could go up to 255 units at a time. Okay, so there is a limit for that. Yeah, but then, then that's one time. Then you could do another 250 another time, you know what I mean? So if you have like 10,000 servers, uh, you could do the math. So if you have like 10,000 servers, I mean, uh, um, if you have 10,000, you may have like, you don't have hundreds, you may have like uh, about 50 or 60 servers. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are other things you could do with this, but primarily uh, you set up Pixie server and then uh, you, uh, work up with that so I'm gonna stop here I'm gonna leave it alone the way it is and then uh, I will go ahead and uh, pick up tomorrow so you said you're using the pixie servers for to update the servers or the clients on the server clients on the servers the clients here is not the desktop computer these are servers also Oh, okay, the servers. Client in the sense is, uh, server in the sense is if you are serving to something else, but we are dealing with all of them are servers, you know? Okay, so they're all considered separate servers. Servers or clients. <clears throat> so in this case, this server is a client because the Pixie server is serving to the other servers. It's serving them. The client is not serving to Pixie, right? So in this scenario, this Client server is a client, and Pixie is the server. Okay. So tomorrow, once we finish setting it all up, is that what the part where you'll show how you connect yep. the other server? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna stop here. We'll pick it up tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. All right.